What's shaking, Hydration Nation, and welcome to the terrifying world of r slash let's not meet. I'm your guide, Q, and these stories do usually touch on sensitive topics that might creep you out or make you uncomfortable, so if that sort of stuff bothers you, this might not be the video for you. Having said that, let's get right into the stories. There was a man in the woods. This happened a couple years ago. I wanted to go to the local wildlife trail to walk in the woods. I had gone several times to hike and jog. I normally went with my boyfriend at the time, but he was working when I wanted to go. I decided to go by myself, and I felt pretty comfortable going. I parked at the far end of the parking lot in case anyone else showed up. The trail continues straight from the parking lot for about a mile until it curves up a large hill. Where I wanted to go was the abandoned parking lot with a lake. The turnoff for this part of the trail was about 400 yards down the trail on the left. Once you turn left, you have about 200 yards of flat trail before it inclined. The inclined section is loose gravel, and it's quite noisy when you're walking up it. This section lasts for about 100 yards. I felt pretty at ease going along the straight trail before I turned left. When I hit the incline, I began to feel uneasy. I brushed it off as being overly paranoid and continued. As I was about halfway up the incline, I began to hear crunching and snapping of trees in the woods to my right. It sounded about a hundred yards off to my right. It was just far enough into the woods that I couldn't see what was making the noise. I froze in my tracks and the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I stood still as I heard the crunching stop. Stupidly, I brushed it off as a deer or a bobcat. The crunching was too loud to be a raccoon or squirrel. I continued up the path until I hit the end of the incline. That's when I heard the thing in the woods begin to run at me. I was frozen in fear. My heart was beating a million miles an hour. Every hair on my body was standing straight up. I was rooted in place. That's when I saw him. A man was running straight for me while holding something in his right hand. I began to run down the incline back to the main trail. I was slipping and sliding down the gravel. I looked behind me and he was now at the top of the incline. He had this easy evil look in his eyes. I noticed the item in his hand was a knife. I almost slipped due to me looking back at the man. He called out to me, GET BACK HERE! His tone was malicious. I sprinted as fast as I could and took a hard right turn back onto the main path. When I hit the parking lot, I didn't look back. I unlocked my car and started it as quickly as I could. Right as I was backing up, he emerges from the trail entrance. He just stands there, partially covered in the shade of the trees. As I tear through the parking lot and onto the highway, he just stares at me. The biggest, creepiest smile comes across his face. He slowly waves at me as I get onto the highway. I never went back to that trail. That encounter has scarred me for life when it comes to hiking in the woods. Edit. No, I did not call the police or file a report. Yes, that was a very stupid thing to do. I could not call the police after it happened because I did not have a cell phone. The nearest police station was 40 minutes away, so by the time I arrived there, the man would be long gone. Looking back at it, I still should have filed a report. I was a shaken up teen that didn't know what to do. Yeah, I mean, I really can't blame her for, like, not being in a great state of mind at that moment. I would have just been focused focused on putting as much distance in between me and that dude as possible. Like, I probably would have been, like, looking behind me just to see if he was, like, following me in a car or something. This is so scary. And honestly, I'm just really glad you had good instincts in this situation. I might have been walking through those same woods and been like, ah, that's probably like a deer in the background like you did at first, and I probably wouldn't have thought anything of, like, hearing the crunching sound and then hearing it stop. I mean, maybe I would have, but I'm really glad that you took it seriously and were able to run out of there and not have something bad happen. This could have been terrible. Invited into his attic. I was 11 at the time and living in a nice suburban area. We had recently moved into this house my parents had built, but it was our first home versus rented house in a sketchy area. It was a very nice neighborhood. The whole family made friends quickly with lots of neighbors, but especially the ones three doors down. They had a daughter my age, I'm male by the way, and a daughter five years younger which was the same age as my sister. Our parents got along very well and we began hanging out quite a bit for barbecues at their house or parties at our house, etc. Friendships were formed quickly and seemed to be very strong. After a year or so, I started realizing things weren't what they seemed. I remember seeing police cars at their house, and a few times in the evenings and when I'd ask my parents what was going on, it was always nothing, just checking up on them type answers. I was no genius, but at 11 that didn't add up. Why didn't the cops just check up on us? 
One day I'm at their house playing slash hanging out and the daughter goes across the street to get another mutual friend which left myself and the father alone in the house. This was really no big deal as it had happened before. But then he approached me and just seemed off. I still don't know what made me feel this way, but I was very uncomfortable and started thinking about leaving. About five minutes later, he tells me he has something cool to show me. I don't remember what it was, but I think it was something about baseball cards, which I was very fond of. I excitedly started following him. He pulled the attic ladder down and asked me to follow him, which I did without hesitation at first. Then something happened and I still can't process what it was. He was ahead of me on the ladder and when he looked back to help me into the attic, there was something off. Something about his eyes, his face, his grin. It wasn't right. It looked evil. I can still see it as clear as day and can't recognize exactly what it was that set my alarms off. Whatever it was, was plenty because I jumped off the ladder and ran out the door. I sprinted all the way home and was choking back tears when I bursted through my front door. Mom was there when I came came through and could see I was obviously out of sorts and immediately started calming me down. Kid you not, that exact night I was woken up around 3 a.m. It was my mom sitting on my bed and as I awoke she held me like a baby. I remember how she smelled and how tightly she had held me and I remember her tears hitting my cheek. Eventually I saw out the window to the neighbor's house surrounded by police and fire trucks, etc. The neighbor dad had killed himself and his daughter in the attic after a standoff with police. Police. There isn't a doubt in my mind, nor my mother's, that that would have been me had I made it into the attic. I still get chills thinking about it. So neighbor man, let's not meet, even in the afterlife. There's something about this one that really messes with me, like this one hit me. I almost started like choking up oddly when I was reading this story that doesn't ever happen to me when I'm reading even the the worst let's not meets and I think it's something about the fact that it was like baseball cards going up to the attic I, I relate to this kid when I was that age I was also obsessed with baseball cards and I would have totally been super excited to go up into that attic and check out what this dad was talking about I don't know if I would have had that same sense to see that something was weird about that and run out of the house and I'm really glad this kid did this just freaks me out I'm still like a little bit shaky Bacon. My best friend's dad. So this happened around nine years ago when I was 11. Changed names, of course. This is certainly messed up. There was a girl at school called Amy who didn't have many friends. She was very quiet, and honestly, I thought she was a bit strange, but I felt like it would be nice to befriend her. We got to talking, and she actually turned out to be really nice, and we became best friends rather quickly. It got to the point where I would spend every weekend at her house, and then we would walk to school together. Even at my age, I knew there was something weird about her dad, Kevin. He was very interested in me, it seems, and would always try to play, fight, and stuff which was weird in itself. Whenever he was around, I felt weird. He was a short, fat man with gray slash white hair. Always has a smirk on his face and really wide eyes. It started off with stealing bits of my food when I wasn't looking, and then laughing and making sure to put his arms around my shoulders to apologize. He'd always be wherever we were, upstairs, downstairs, or garden, he always lurked about. There was a day that Amy's nan was visiting, Amy's mother's mom, and Kevin kissed her nan on the mouth hello, which was weird anyway, but then it turned into the creepiest, sloppiest French kiss. Everyone except me and Amy found it funny. She put on a smile when her family looked over, but I was horrified. There was a day we were playing in her room and Kevin came in and started an argument over nothing. It got heated and he grabbed rubbish bags saying that he was going to throw all of her toys away. Of course, an 11 year old is going to go mad if they think their dolls are being thrown away, so she was hysterical. We followed him downstairs where he told her if she spoke to him like that again she would regret it. It was then that he started to remove his belt. What the hell? She pushed me towards their front door which was just in the front of the stairs so we could run out of it, but she was sort of half laughing as if she was trying to convince me it wasn't serious, but I could tell it was. I got out of the door, but when I turned around and waited, Kevin slammed the door shut but not the porch door, and then all I heard was Amy screaming at the top of her lungs. I was so scared, but I didn't want to leave her, so I just stood there. Eventually, I found the courage to go back in, and I went upstairs to Amy, who was brushing her doll's hair. She smiled at me, but she had a tear-stained face. There were no visible marks, but all that was on show were her arms, so he could have hit her anywhere. 
I then felt as if I had to protect her, so I continued going there and didn't tell my mom a thing. One night, I woke up thirsty, and we were close enough for me to just go get myself a drink, so I went downstairs, and Kevin was laying there on the floor in the dark with nothing but tidy whities on, and he just stared at me. It was the creepiest thing. Just the street lamp from outside shining through a gap in the blind lit up the room enough to see. I didn't get myself a drink, and I just ran back upstairs. I wouldn't go there after that until I knew for sure he wouldn't be there and I didn't sleep over anymore. I'm not sure if I've ever told my mom, but I think she'd go and kill him if she knew. I was talking to Amy recently, and she opened up to me because she sent me her mental health assessment sheet. When she was eight years old, she woke up to Kevin forcing himself on her 14-year-old sister, different dad, not that it makes it any better, who was screaming for Amy. It also stated that he beat Amy on a regular basis. Most recent was two years ago. He beat her up in front of a friend, and her friend called the police. I told her the things I'd seen and how I knew something wasn't right. All I know of him now is that he's in the hospital and I don't give a damn. Edit, her mom knew all of this was happening but didn't do a thing about it. Stuff like this really makes my blood boil, and as far as the mom is concerned, I'm guessing she was battered as well, and I don't want to speculate too much, but I'm guessing that she was too scared to do anything or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it would have been nice if an adult in this situation would have, like, involved the police and gotten this man in jail much earlier. He's in the hospital now. I don't know what that's in regards to, but honestly, uh, people like this should just be taken out back and put down like old yeller. Like, we don't need you in our society. We we don't need to try and give you help. If you've done shit like this, you're done. You've, 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 you've proven that you have no place on this earth, and we don't need to take care of you as a person. You should just be dead. For legal reasons, that last bit of commentary was simply satirical. That was a satirical rant. It is not to be taken seriously, I guess. Although I do personally wish that the governments around the world would make consequences for this sort of stuff even more harsh, so that if you could prove that somebody did something like this, they would go away to jail forever. Ever, or there would be some sort of death penalty so that people would feel more comfortable coming out about stuff like this without fear of consequences down the road when that person gets out of jail. So, yeah. If you'd like something a little bit less creepy, but still sort of creepy, I did release a Creepy Encounters video earlier this week, which is more vague encounters with people where something was off, but it's just hard to kind of put your finger on what was going on, but it definitely creeped them out. If you want to cleanse your palate and watch something a little bit less cre creepy, I've got a ton of stuff on my channel for that. I also feel the need to let you guys know about this CSGO tournament that I'm doing for charity with a bunch of other awesome YouTubers like Softcore, Dark Dom, Fresh, Slazo, Geofilms. It's going to be a really good time, and it's for really good causes, like UNICEF, the Mary Rice Center, and Lifeline. So it'd be really cool to see you there. That's Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be streaming it live from my YouTube channel. If you're interested in any of the other people in this CSGO charity stream, you can check out their channels or their Twitch channels as well, because you can see it from their perspective. But anyway, skate on to the best of your abilities. Make sure you're drinking more water. Stay safe out there, and I will see you very soon. Have a great day.